friends, welcome to my YouTube channel, Peter Updates. If you don't know me, I am Rakesh Negi and I am an aviation enthusiast. In today's session, I am going to discuss about the operation of basic rotary inverter. Okay. Before we start, let me tell you one thing, friends. The use of rotary inverter is superseded by the use of these solid state inverters or static inverters right but the rotary inverters are still used in some small types of aircraft so let's start the topic okay so the topic is rotary inverter operation the rotary inverter has a DC motor and an AC generator. In place of AC generator, some advanced rotary inverters can also have uh, alternators, right? Before discussing about the rotary inverter operations, let's discuss something interesting about the rotary inverter. The rotary inverter is a device or electrical device which can convert DC into AC. DC into AC. Now this DC can be from the batteries, okay? It can be a 14 volt battery system or 28 volt battery system okay in the explanation which i'm going to take today it will be about the 28 volt dc system okay next this dc is converted to ac so this ac can be single phase ac okay or three phase ac having a voltage of 115 volt 400 hertz okay it can be single phase or or it can be three phase okay now what about the DC voltage what I told it, it will be it can be a 14 volt system or a 28 volt system. So I will explain an inverter operation which will convert 28 volt DC to 115 volt 3 phase 400 hertz. Okay. We can also have conversion of DC into AC and that AC into a lower voltage. This 115 volt is a higher voltage right and it can also be 26 volt AC. Okay, like 115 volt AC is there, we can also have 26 volt AC which is a lower voltage. Like a lower voltage in the aircraft can be used for the operation of instruments and the higher voltage that is 115 volt AC can be used in aircraft for operation of units like pumps. Okay, now let's discuss how this DC is converted to AC in the rotary inverter. So for this the rotary inverter makes the use of a DC motor and an AC generator okay so to this DC motor will give DC supply and this DC motor is mechanically coupled to the AC generator and AC generator will produce AC so what we are getting is DC converted to AC right so let me explain this using a schematic circuit diagram okay suppose this is the DC supply 28 volt DC coming from the batteries okay or any other system so this supply is coming so there will be a switch okay which will be connected here suppose this one so this supply is connected to suppose I have pressed the switch it is connected is going down like this and it is given to a DC motor okay suppose this is the DC motor I'm writing M here okay so in the supply is going to the armature of the DC motor and of course there will be the field winding of the motor suppose this is the field winding of the motor this one okay so this supply which is coming it is going to the field winding also and to the armature also that is of the motor so that means the motor is getting the supply and both of them they will be getting the grounding path from here like this okay so the field winding is getting grounding path from here armature is getting grounding path from here so both of them they are getting the grounding path from here so this is a dc motor okay so as of now what i have shown you supply coming from here and given to the dc motor okay now just rotation of this dc motor is not sufficient right we have to achieve our target that is conversion of dc to ac so for that what we need to have is this motor is coupled mechanically with I am showing a dotted line to show you the mechanical shaft is coupled mechanically with AC generator okay so the AC generator is connected like this suppose this is the field winding of the AC generator
ओके सो दिस फील्ड वाइंडिंग इज वोन्ड ऑन द शाफ्ट और वी कैन से रोटर सो द फील्ड वाइंडिंग इज ऑन द रोटर ओके सो दिस इज द फील्ड वाइंडिंग इफ आई वॉन्ट टू कंट्रोल द सप्लाई और द एक्साइटेशन करेंट इन दिस फील्ड वाइंडिंग ओके आई नीड टू इनकॉर्पोरेट सम मेथड ऑफ रेजिस्टेंस वेरिएशन इन दिस ओके एंड दैट इज कनेक्टेड बाई यूजिंग अ वेरिएबल रजिस्टर लाइक दिस सपोज दिस इज द वेरिएबल रजिस्टर और वी कॉल इट एज द ट्रिमिंग रजिस्टर ओके सो दिस रजिस्टर वैल्यू इज प्री सेट टू कंट्रोल द एक्साइटेशन करेंट इन द फील्ड वाइंडिंग ओके सो दिस करेंट इज ऑल्सो कमिंग फ्रॉम हियर That means the DC supply which comes, it goes to the field winding of motor, to the armature winding of motor, and also to the field winding of the generator. Okay, which is wound on the rotor. So this is the mechanical shaft on which the winding is wound, and to this winding, DC supply is given. Okay, and this will get grounding path from. As this is the grounding path, let's connect it here. So this is how the field winding is getting the grounding path. That means this also will get energized and produce a magnetic field. So you know well, friends. when dc current is given to a field winding it produces a magnetic field but that is stationary okay but now how will i have that magnetic field moving okay to have the magnetic field moving see that this field winding is one on this shaft which is rotating right because of the motor so when the shaft is rotating it is rotating the magnetic field right how is the rot magnetic field rotating since this shaft is connected to the dc motor and this shaft is having the winding one on it it will rotate the field winding and since the field winding has produced a magnetic field because of the uh, excitation current in it that magnetic field will start moving okay now we are having a magnetic field which is rotating right so in that rotating magnetic field or moving magnetic field if i place a conductor what will happen friends according to faraday's law an emf will be induced in that conductor okay and that conductor is actually the armature windings okay suppose this is the winding okay it is a star connected winding okay so this star connected winding is in the stator okay and rotor is here okay this is the rotor this is the shaft which is rotating and in the stator what we have is we have the armature windings now in these armature windings what will happen is since the magnetic field is rotating the magnetic field will cut these windings and it will cause three phase emf to be induced in these windings right what we will get over here is three phase supply and this will be given to the distribution system to the distribution system system okay like the bus bars so friends here what we are getting is the three phase ac supply that means it will have a frequency also right and frequency is dependent on rpm right frequency varies directly proportional to the rpm that means in order to have a constant frequency the speed also should be constant okay so to get the constant speed okay what we can do is we can vary the excitation current in the field winding in such a way that we can preset the resistance in its field winding according to the rpm requirement okay or according to the speed requirement of the dc motor so we can preset a resistance value over here so i'll just erase this and i will induce a trimming resistor here okay so this is the trimming resistor so this trimming resistor value can be preset to maintain the excitation current to such a value that we get a certain speed of the motor which corresponds to the 400 hertz frequency okay i repeat again the resistance value of this resistor can be preset to a certain value such that a certain value of excitation current will be there in the field winding of this motor and this will cause the motor to run at a certain rpm which will be corresponding to 400 hertz frequency so this is how the 400 hertz frequency is achieved by varying the input voltage to the motor okay so if you are asked how do we maintain 400 hertz frequency in the rotary inverter system the answer is by regulating the input voltage in the dc motor which causes the motor to run at a constant rpm which would correspond to 400 hertz frequency okay so friends this much part is the this much part is the dc motor and 
this is the AC generator okay this is the AC generator so as of now friends I have shown you the DC motor and AC generator how are they connected and how does the system work briefly now let's discuss in detail how does the system operate as we are having the full circuit diagram over here okay so initially what will happen is from the DC system the supply is coming like this and waiting at this point so when you press this switch the supply will move ahead by means of this switch it will go like this and it will go in the field winding of the DC motor in the armature and also the supply will go to the field winding and that is acting as the excitation current for this field winding of the AC generator and this is the armature of the AC generator in which the AC is to be induced when the system will start rotating now as the supply is given to the motor the obviously the motor will start rotating yes so when the motor starts rotating can you see this shaft this shaft okay this dotted line which I have drawn here this is the shaft which will start rotating so when it is rotating see what will happen is it is rotating the field winding also which is wound on this shaft right so the field winding is it energized or not yes it is energized and producing a magnetic field right so when the rotor is rotating it will rotate the magnetic field also so when the magnetic field is rotating what is that magnetic field doing that magnetic field is cutting these conductors okay which are the armature conductors of the AC generator and what will happen in that case EMF will be induced in these conductors and if they are connected to the circuit current will start flowing right so whatever EMF is induced here that is 115 volt 400 Hertz three phase AC supply right and that is given to the distribution system now the question is though we are getting the voltage how is the frequency maintained how do we get 400 Hertz frequency to get this 400 Hertz frequency remember that friends frequency depends on the value of n that is the speed at which the system is rotating okay at which this DC motor is rotating so this speed can be controlled by putting a trimming resistor here so this trim resistance can be preset to a certain value such that the excitation current in the DC motor will be maintained to a value which will cause the motor to rotate at a certain speed and that would correspond to 400 Hertz frequency okay so that is how the 400 Hertz frequency is attained by regulating the input voltage to the DC motor and if you want to control the output voltage of the AC generator what is there we have this trim resistance which is incorporated in the field circuit of the AC generator this one so this resistance is also preset to a value to maintain the excitation current in the AC generator field circuit okay friends so this is about the operation of the rotary inverter so finally what we get we get from DC supply we are getting the AC supply right and that is the purpose of the inverter okay friends so friends i hope you are clear with the operation of this type of rotary inverter in which the resistors were used for regulating the speeds and the output of the ac generator there is yet another type of uh, rotary inverter in which instead in place of the ac generator we are having the alternator and the regulation is not done in that type of rotary inverter by resistors but by the use of carbon pile voltage regulator for that i'll make a separate video and share with you also friends you can also install a switch over here okay and name it as inverter switch inverter switch okay in this session i hope you have enjoyed learning the operation of rotary inverter and what are the main parts in the rotary inverter i'll come up again with a new topic in my next session till then enjoy learning the topic and thank you